Farah, welcome back. You're still watching News Over and the conversation is still ongoing. We're still staying with the Niger Delta, Niger NDDC, yes, Niger NDDC, uh, that's Niger Delta Development uh, Commission um, crisis. Uh, we've had Bola Oba in our Lagos studio. Uh, we've had this wonderful conversation. But right now, we're taking this conversation to Abuja. We have um, Somomobo Jack Rich, a very papa himself. He's also called um, uh, a Niger Delta leader. Uh, interesting conversation we'll be having here with him. He's also the chairman of the NDDC Palliative Distribution uh, uh, Committee. So good to have you join us in our Buddha studio uh, at Berry Papa. Good morning. Welcome to News Up. You're welcome. Good morning. Yeah, so, so, so good to have you join us. You, you are indeed a key, a key player in this whole conversation. Uh, one, you are a Niger Delta, uh, a full breed Niger Delta, and you are also a Niger Delta leader, and you're also involved in the NDDC. Now, with all of this that's playing out, which of course involves you, how much sense can you make as a Niger Delta uh, 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 child? How much sense can you make for your region with all of this playing out? Well, well um, I can say, first of all, let me thank the president for um, finding it, making it necessary to have uh, been able to constitute the IMC. You know, the IMC, at the, present, the way it is today, I think there is so much distraction. And um, looking at what they have done in the past, the palliatives that they have been able to, uh, you know, you know, sent out to cushion the, you know, the um, the problems of the indigent people, the vulnerables in the region. And that is also another landmark for them. But what I see here is power trouble, you know, interested parties from the government. Playing out. Uh, they are the activities and in the uh, NDC since from December 2019 uh, till date, it has never been stable. It is either one problem or the other. And when these things happen, it will not let the IMC concentrate to do exactly what the mandates they have. You know, the mandate that are given to them is to ensure that the region is developed and to ensure that the people in the region are not lacking any project. But whereby a government or a set of people who are interested in making one uh, 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 one person who is very close to them or an ally of them to be at the ends of affairs, perhaps to be the MD or the chairman or the EDFA. This battle is what has brought the NDDC to the way it is today. And that is why distractions are so, you know, are so much felt in the commission. Before all of these issues from the NDDC, uh, there, there were some level of silence, and so you would assume that uh, um, activities should be going on towards the development of that region. You indeed uh, have always shown to be very committed to this. What would you consider, aside the leadership tussle between uh, people at the NDDC and other leaderships there, to have been inhibiting the development that you would have loved to see as a Niger Delta within your region? Well, I said earlier, I said that is why the commission hasn't, you know, been, you know, been stable. Because the interested parties are still there. For example, the governors are saying they are critical stakeholders in the commission. And so they have the right to nominate or to appoint who becomes what. I'll give you an example. I am the chair, I was made chairman of Niger at the NDC Palliative Distribution Committee. <coughs> Now, as a chairman, you know, I was appointed perhaps on merit. I had my antecedents, and then the commission, because they wanted these palliatives to go down to the, 
you know, the vulnerable, to the people, the, you know, the host communities, you know, and then looking at the mandate given by the president, that these things are to cushion the sufferings of the people during this pandemic season. Now, you can imagine where a governor, a gov a governors will come and claim that for me to have been given that appointment, you know, as to ensure that these palliatives go, you know, down to the, the you know, the end Jesus, you know, that I should, I, I should not be for one reason or the other, you know. Now, you see that that alone puts the IMC in a turmoil, in a confusion, in a confused state, you know, where, you know, where they begin to be worried whether or not to take me off. But, but unfortunately, the inauguration has been made. And these people really wanted the Niger Delta to benefit from it so that we cannot continue to keep on insulting the president. And the president is not ready to develop us. The president is not ready to key into the development uh, of Niger Delta. Now, these problems went as far as leading youths to the streets of Port Harcourt at the, you know, at the commission's headquarters, you know, protesting that, no, they should let this be. Now, if you look at only this scenario, this little part of it, you will know that it's enough, enough distraction. Now, the people, the AMC, are begin, beginning to be scared. Fight with arrows from left, from right, you know, attacking them, even though we know that these people could be, you know, uh, reliable. For example, I am one of the persons who came out to say amongst the Nigerian leaders, myself and Victor Ben, Boilov, we came out and supported them. After looking very inwardly to know that these people they inaugurated or they appointed are still Niger Delta people. The um, uh, Ms. Joy Mune, the former MD, uh, you know, uh, of NDC, the, uh, the former entry board chair by MD, uh, um, Ojobo, Kairo Ojobo, who was the then uh, EDP, and uh, um, uh, what do you call um, the late um, Eta, uh, you know, Eta or whatever you call him. Those are people that are from Niger Delta extraction. So there is no need for us to begin to fight when we say development. You know, fighting as if we have a personal interest is our problem. Me, I want to say some of these things that are happening is just to distract. You know, the, you know, you know what the pop, you know, the, you know the people from actually getting, you know. For. If the if the MD have decided to build a bridge in River State, let me use an example in River State that will you know that will connect um, the Calabari community, and then the governor says no, don't build that bridge. What you should come and build should be a flyover. You know, you see that the MD will not have so much power, even though he is given the mandate by the you know by the federal government. There will be confusion. The MD will want to be you know quiet to respect the interest of the governor, and then the interest of the governor perhaps is not you know favorable to the interest of the citizens or the of the interest of the people. You know, so this is where the you know the mix up comes you know comes in. I am I am saying that the board should be left alone to do what the, the mandates are, you know, what they have been assigned to do, instead of distraction. After all, they have their belly now in December to, uh, you know, to have done whatever they have, the mandate they have given. And then everybody has the right, if it is to probe or to do whatever, have the right to also sit the board down and then probe them if necessary. Instead of interjecting, distracting them, bringing in petitions, flimsy excuses. I am not ready for that. I am not ready for, uh, I am not ready to join issues with all the people there. Although some other people have the right of doing that. Look at now, we are talking about some amount of money, but these monies are spent, how many, how many IMCs have come and gone? You know, this are, is still in the chain of this, uh, you know, cause because when you bring in yes. an, a new board, the new board will come and start the... A very quick one. Uh, let, let, me, let me come in here. Let me come in here. Uh, you started off by commending the constitution of the IMC. But are you aware of the series of allegations, even though you, you're, you focus on the fact that you think uh, that um, the NDDC is being distracted uh, by certain other forces? But are you aware that there are allegations against these IMC uh, that you seem to have um, commended? Uh, there are allegations about um, uh, fraudulent transactions, uh, 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 diversion of funds uh, within this I mean, with this IMC. Are you aware of that? 
Yes, yes. It is true. I've been hearing about that. Allegations and counter allegations. Like I said earlier, when people are interested in a particular thing, there is nothing you will do, no matter how you do it, that will be good in their eyes. Because what they wanted is the goal. And until they get to that goal, whoever you bring to that position is not qualified. You know, so like I said, the IMC has been accused of um, um, whatever spending. I, I, I'm not ready to you know, go into that because I'm not a member of the board. I, am only, uh, I was only given a mandate to ensure that the distribution is met. Okay, for example, you're talking about uh, um, uh, allegations. What about me? Like I just told you that I became uh, whatever, and the mandate or the template given to us is that this is how to share this thing. This is the directive of the president. And we should make sure it goes down to the, you know, to the people. And then the governor came to tell them that, no, even in the state, they will want this, uh, 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 this uh, um, uh, palliative, uh, uh, um, the, food, uh, the food palliative to be given and then over to him. You know, and then the, the people said, no. The IMC said, no, this is not the directive of the president. The governor made everything to be, you know, uh, make, to make it look, you know, uh, uh, look not possible that for, to the point that they have to ask me to do exactly what the governor said, uh, you know, requested. So now, if that is done, and then these people do it the way the governor requested, will you come and also ask, tell them that they have done something wrong? So most of these things, you will see that there are some forces behind them, forcing them to do what they are not supposed to do. Perhaps forcing the minister or even the IMC themselves, you know, trying to distract them from the major purpose which they have formed after the allegation. I have heard several of it, and then I try to even speak to some of them directly the way I can. You know, I came to understand that these whole things will come to, today, Magu, where is Magu? Magu is, uh, you know, is out, and then they are probing Magu. So that is how even this board, in whatever the allegations are, at the end, this board will also face a panel. They can constitute a panel to investigate them thoroughly. Okay. You know, I think that that is the only thing for me, I, you know, very Papa, uh, uh, you, know, you, I will, I will that you should be in the know about a lot of things in the Niger Delta region. And you just mentioned now that there are some forces that are working against the IMC, also working within the leadership. Can you share that with us? Maybe that could just be the answer, the missing link that we need to know. Okay, we just saw on the t t television and the social media, uh, you know, um, the day before yesterday or yesterday, how the governor in his magnanimity rescued, you know, Jerry Nume, you know, from the hands of our doctors or um, uh, security agents who have been sent to come and uh, apprehend her. No, that is kudos to the governor. Of course, the governor has, you know, uh, has some level of um, humanity when it comes to River State. Is doing, is doing. Uh, it is my people, and nobody can touch them. Even for me. Some time ago, around the 2014, when I was very close to the governor, you know, they, they declared me wanted unjustly. You know, when they know that I'm not a criminal, I've not been a victim of anything. You know, the governor came out and then made speech to that effect and, you know, condemned it. So I know the governor that he can do even better than that. But now, let me tell you now, for you to know that there's a dis there are destructions. Don't forget, I told you that the joint email led I am C. I am one of the leaders who came to the commission to endorse them, and then and then advise our Niger Delta youth to support them, and that is why the I M C stayed. Now the joint movement, for one reason or the other, I don't know. I'm not into that. Has been you know relieved of our duties. Now a new board has you know a new uh, M D has come, who is a professor, Kime Kime Bradu Kumo Ponde. You know, now this guy is very fluent and he's doing his best. Now, the Joe Nune is perhaps also, you know, you know, at the west side, accusing, the, you know, uh, the uh, minister the, uh, uh, of Niger Delta that he is the one behind a, a downfall or whatever it is. Now, the, I never knew that the minister could be that powerful to do that without the, gov uh, the president. But that is not the story now. For, for me to, you know, uh, further but just my point. Now, the video we saw yesterday on the social media was that the governor has gone to rescue Joy Nune. I want, I want to be very, very different from the people's view. 
Because me too, I watched it over and over again. You know, when you look at this scenario, you come to ask yourself, uh, what are the security operatives? What are the people that have been sent? Because according to the governor, he said over 50, you know, uh, uh, 50 uh, security men, policemen and, uh, you, know, you know, forces. You know, but I still look very around, uh, just around the, uh, you know, the buildings. I cannot find the security men that actually came, you know, to apprehend Joy Mune. You know, okay, now, that is by the way. Now, the question here is, if you listen to Joy Mune's speech, if you listen to her speech, she said, she spoke to the governor earlier in the evening, and then the governor said, whatever she experiences, whatever, whatever movements she, she senses around her house, she should put a call across to him. Now, now looking at the drama that played out there, now, are you, uh, are you telling me that you're not convinced that it was an orchestrated movement? You know, but I am not here to, uh, you know, to criticize because Joy Mune is a reverse woman and I've al al almost admi always admired her. I've been in, uh, fortunate enough to be with her a couple of times in the office directly one-on-one. -on -one. So I knew, I knew her the little I can. But I am telling you about the script that was played because I call it a script, you know, and that is why I am worried. We saw only the entourage of the governor. You know, and then, you know, we did not see those security operators since when did uh, 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 Atabio become Minister of uh, uh, Police, uh, Police Affairs or Minister of Defense? Uh, uh, you know, Atabio is just a Nigerian minister. And then there is nothing that has, been, that has happened that will force Atabio or even the president to go apprehend, you know, uh, uh, Joy Mune, and then they cannot even stand to testify that okay. they did. Uh, uh, you know, so you look at it, you will know that yes. these are all part of the build up to. Yeah. Very Papa. Yeah, yes, uh, uh, so, so far, so far on this station, uh, uh, nobody had um, alluded to the fact that um, it was um, the minister for Niger Delta uh, that orchestrated that move. Nobody has equally alluded that um, it was a script that was being played out by certain individuals. Uh, but I, I could tell you that I have videos of um, Joy's... Uh, entrance being broken into. I have those, um, uh, those, those um, amateur videos. But uh, away from that, um, there are conversations going on right now that the Niger Delta Development Commission should be scrapped. Shouldn't we have a, I mean, sh would you see that as a better way of handling, in fact, it is uh, in some quarters, it is said to be an illegality from the onset. Would you subscribe to this position uh, as a way forward uh, for Niger Delta? You would agree that um, the NDC had not met the mandate for, for, which, for, which, for which it was, create, it was created. Would you, would you subscribe to the fact that um, the NDC should be scrapped? And maybe, maybe somehow, somehow, development will come to the region. Well, uh, first of all, let us look at the formation of NDC or whatever the mandate they are given. They said NBDC is an interventionist um, agency. And so if uh, to develop the Niger Delta region, and if it is scrapped today, is it the, the Sompa deck that we are going to use as an NDDC? You know, the people that are uh, making that agitation, I think they are part of the people that have brought uh, the Niger Delta to the position it is today. You know, because if um, I, 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 NDDC will be scrapped, which of the government agencies are we going to rely upon? We have, not, we have what they call the Niger Delta Basin Authority. We have not, nobody is questioning that. You know, nothing is happening there. We have so much amount of money that have been mixed, you know, in that, you know, parastata. But it is not, nothing is happening. That Basin Authority has been silent. Nobody questioned it. And for me, I am not, uh, I'm not going to subscribe to scrubbing the Niger Delta, uh, uh, a, a development commission because it has done so much. For example, in our states today, you will see that responsibility, the the uh, you know the uh, in, you know the responsibilities of development developing the states is being given to the government of the state to the governors of the state. Let me me I, I always take my state as a case study. I'm from River State. You know we are talking about accountability in NDC between eighty billions of naira. Whatever it is that have been misappropriated, okay. If you know, if we have the right to give to question NDC's accountability, you know, because I know that it is democracy. 
there is no there is a democracy without accountability. All right. And uh, then uh, I want to ask you, as a group, I'm the leader of the Network for Defense of Democracy and Good Governance. All right, so but we'll, we'll come back to you in, in a bit so that I guess you have to finish your thoughts as we go out because of time. We'll have to get back to the studios because uh, we, we'll be back we'll be back with you in a bit in Abuja. Let's get back to the studios. Go on over. So many questions we put across to you. We were able to do so to uh, Barry Papa. What's your take on all of his uh, positions? Uh, from the gentleman's uh, remarks and, and opinions, it is obvious that he is a partisan in the issue. Uh, against the fact that the IMC, Internal Management Committee, is an illegal creation, but because he's a beneficiary of an appointment by the, the illegal creation, he obviously believes that is the best thing that has happened to the, to the Niger Delta. Uh, for the information of my brother, the NDDC is a creation of an act of parliament. And in a rule of law respecting democracy, in a rule of law respecting democracy, when governments want to do something on a particular issue that there are extant or there is an extant legislation on, government is expected to follow the law. And the law, as of today, IMC is a stranger not only to the Constitution, but to the act that created, that created the Niger Delta Development NDDDC. Now, maybe because he is an incumbent beneficiary of the, of the power structure as it is, he believes that, you know, he is not offended by, and I said earlier before he was introduced, that in a normal federation, NDDC would have been an abomination. But you know what? It is now an institution that is supposed to be predicated on law. And we are saying the government, the federal government, the president should respect that law, because parliament had an intention when that law was, 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 uh, was made. Forget about that. The gentleman also, because of the side he's sitting on now, is rationalizing that what may have taken place yesterday could have been scripted. I don't want to say he's totally wrong. You know, he knows he knows the dynamics of how the drama of power is played out, or the melodrama of power is played out in the Niger Delta. Indeed, when he was talking, I just felt, you know what, this is own boy. And if one boy, if I'm talking about Mushi, you better respect my opinion. Because forget about the grammar I'm speaking, I know the dynamics of how my neighborhood functions. So, if, uh, if a berry papa is talking about the Niger Delta, and especially the the absurdities in end in the politics of Niger State uh, uh, of uh, uh, of the River State in particular, I can't say it's talking nonsense. So uh, people, uh, open your hearts. It's easy for people this morning to want to think what is the very papa talking because if they shop there now, if they you know if they talk uh, say they no attack uh, Nunes out. I thought about what he said he, even yesterday, but you know what? As at this juncture, from all this brick batting of accusations and counter accusations, the quality of life of an average Niger Delta is still of an average Niger Delta is still miserable. The environment, the environment is still at least relative to what we've seen in other places where crude oil is explored and exploited is still abominable. So, as a Niger Delta, forgetting about the position he finds himself now, what is the 
What does he want to see? Okay, that's a good place to, to go back to Emery Papa. Uh, Emery Papa, uh, I haven't listened to Bola Oba a while ago. Let's take it in two minutes from where he ended his conversation. As a Niger Delta born citizen, are you comfortable with the life uh, that your people are exposed to, uh, given to the fact that the NDC, like you said, is an interventionist um, uh, uh, setting from the government? Over 40 billion naira since inception. Are you comfortable with the life that. 40 your, billion naira? 40 billion dollars, rather. Are you comfortable with the life that your people in the region are experiencing right now? In two minutes. God forbid. God forbid I am not. I agree with uh, my brother Bola. I am never comfortable. But like I said earlier, because the NDC has come, doesn't mean there was no government. Now, NDC, I have, I have not been given nothing in the commission. The responsibility I was given is not to benefit from it, just to ensure that these things are divided or shared or distributed amicably to the various states. That is not going to purchase. I'm not the vendor. I'm not the vendor. I'm not the one who went to acquire these things. But now, while we are looking at the development of the, you know, of the uh, region, we are also looking at the sanity. Because there will be no development when there are distractions. I am also talking from my own view that the Niger Delta Development Commission has not done so much since the inception of this new administration. But perhaps the IMC uh, today, which is not recognized by law, is to just go out of, you know, because the federal government, the president has, you know, uh, uh, the powers to fire and hire, according to politicians. And then so uh, the president, in his own wisdom, has decided to constitute this IMC so as to be able to set up the forensic uh, uh, audit on the you know the you know the uh, uh, the past leadership, the transactions and the you know the activities of the past leadership. Now this one is like, hey, wait, we are uh, let us hold on the you know the okay. substantive board because if we bring the substantive right. board, they will come and be part of this. And instead of being part of this, let us form an IMC that will stay and begin to handle this. Thing. But remember All something. Right. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Sobo Mobo Jack Reach. Uh, everyone calls you uh, Weary Papa, member NDDC Palliative Distribution Committee, uh, Natural Delta, son of the soil. Thank you so much for spending your time and thoughts with us this morning on News Hub. That's how much we can take from you. In You're Abuja. welcome. Thank you so very much. Warlord. Okay, yes. <laughs> and the world. And the warlord, yes. Let's not be Natural Delta leader. Natural leader. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. warlord or a warlord? No, well, he's, he's a leader. He's warlord and also a leader, leader in the region. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Iberi uh, Papa. We'll, we'll one day also see have you back. So let's take back to the studios. We have to coast home right now. Yeah. What's your? How do you string up everything today in thirty seconds? Uh, it's, it's unfortunate and painful because the reality, as we still speak, is that the lives of the majority, majority of Niger Deltans, is still not consistent with the amount of resources that supposedly ought to have been expended for the betterment of their lives. And the environment, like I said earlier on, actually indicts all of us mm. as Nigerians and people who claim to be human beings. Well, Oba, that's the perfect place to end the show. Thank you so very much for your time with us on the show. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. You know, I called you Firebrand when the show started. You didn't, you didn't but you brought, you brought the real, you brought the real Firebrand. You didn't disappoint so you, me. You could see that at the point I was a gentleman relative to. <laughs> anyway, it's a beautiful show we had, um, Sharon, no, no doubt. Uh, it's, a, it's a Friday edition of the show, and um, this is where we call it um, a day. Uh, so, 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 so I'm so excited that you were there with us for the last um, there about three hours. We had quite informative conversation. Like we say, it's a Friday. It's a weekend. Um, just play safe. Uh, be extremely very careful. Be responsible for uh, your life and your safety. COVID-19 is real. Physical distancing. Wear your mask. Avoid um, excessive gatherings. These are all the precautionary measures that have been put in place for us um, to stay safe. I'm David Babadike. Hopefully, we'll do this again next week. Good morning. I'm Shewe Diji.